Hey, health fix junkies, it's Teresa Lear Levine from Becoming More Me, the podcast for busy minded entrepreneurs that want to be more and do less. Blessed to have appeared on not just one, but three episodes of The Health Fix. So I encourage you to check out episode 445, 411, and 322 of The Health Fix podcast, where I talk about breaking up with your old self, self sabotage fears, and thriving through life's changes, <clears throat> perimenopause, using EFT tapping and hypnotherapy. You're listening to the Health Fix Podcast. Here's your amazing host, Dr. Janine Kraus. Hey, Health Junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Helen Mary Finlay. She is the founder of Finlay and Green, a skincare line dedicated to taking care of menopausal skin. Now, if that name sounds familiar, you are correct. She was on the Health Fix podcast, episode 406, where she gave us 10 plus secrets for aging skin. Helen is a Hollywood makeup artist and skincare expert with over 20 years of experience. She's worked on blockbuster movies like Pirates of the Caribbean and popular TV shows, including Parks and Recreation, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Modern Family, Barry, and The Goldbergs. Being in the skincare industry and makeup industry, Helen tried everything out there in terms of products, and she realized there was a lack of safe and effective skincare products available to women in perimenopause and menopause. So she went on a mission to change that, and thus, Finlay and Green was born. In this episode, Helen and I are going to be talking about taking care of your skin while traveling and what to do to help keep your skin glowing despite temperature changes and sun exposure. I love talking with Helen because I learn so much each time we chat. So if you're noticing your skin is changing as you get older and you're struggling with dryness, you have to listen to this podcast. So let's reintroduce you to Helen Mary Finlay. All right. Glad to have you back on again, Helen. So excited to talk about skin stuff. I'm really excited about this too. And yeah, anything about skin, um, I'm your your woman. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because, you know, this is the time of the year when folks always ask me like, should I be doing something to kind of prep my skin for the summer? Or like, is there like, do I need to do some of the crazy stuff they do online with all the lymphatics? We are just talking about that. So I think it's fun to kind of talk about that because we see so much on social media and people doing all kinds of things saying they're prepping their skin, but it's like, is that going to last? Is that really going to move the needle? Am I wasting my time? So let's talk about the things that actually matter. Well, you know, skincare is all about consistency, but it's not just the the products you use. Um, you got to eat well because eating well has a huge positive effect on the skin so there's lots of great foods you can eat you've got to drink plenty of 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 water you've got to hydrate um and i just learned this because i'm always wondering how much water am i supposed to drink and i read something recently that you basically so if you know so for example if you're um 150 pounds right mm -hmm. you halve your weight so that would be 75 and that's 75 ounces that you need to drink and two thirds of that needs to be uh, water. So that for me makes it a lot easier. Otherwise, is that 12 glasses, six glasses? I don't know. So right. um, yeah, so it's the, uh, the product, the food, and being hydrated, but hydration is just the absolute key, key uh, for summer skincare for sure. Absolutely. I mean, it definitely with your 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 moisturizer product. I mean, I learned in, in the Caymans earlier this year that, you know, I go out in the sun. OK, right. I, I'm going to dehydrate. Right. Because I'm in the sun. And then I learned that if I put it on and moisturize right after coming in from being outside, I prevented a burn. I was like, score, score. So hydration, I can I can wholeheartedly agree to that. So with the skincare routine and hydration, and your moisturizer, of course, we want to talk about that. Um, what what are some of the hydration routines? Like, of course, we, you know, you just talked about water. What are some of the other things that we might be overlooking that might be dehydrating us? Well, it's your caffeine <laughs> intake, you know, your alcohol intake. But, you know, that's hard when you're going on holiday or it's the summer and you, you, you want to have a glass of wine, right? You want to have a couple yeah. of cocktails. So I guess it's everything in moderation, but they're definitely going to kind of dehydrate your skin. Plus traveling, you know, if you're traveling on a plane, Mm -hmm. planes dehydrate your skin going to all these different fabulous um you know locations uh 
dry, arid, humid uh, climates, that's also going to dehydrate your skin. So that's why you got to have a, a product, the right product. Um, so I always look for certain ingredients, um, like hyaluronic acid is, is a great ingredient. But if you're going to a really dry environment, squalene is fantastic because it's a bit heavier, but it never blocks the pores. So yeah, so it's about being hydrated, see, trying to work out, you know, is it dry, arid or humid and uh, figuring out the, the, the product for you. So if it's gonna be humid, you want a really light product, but a hydrating product. Okay. Okay. And like, if it's going to be really dry, you mm -hmm. want something obviously that's super moisturizing, but are we like, are we thinking, and, and this is how I think, and, and I don't know if other people think this way. So guys who are listening, if you're like, she's weird, I think like, how many times can I apply a moisturizer or something throughout the day when say I'm somewhere very dry? Like say I went to the desert. It's dry. Right. Well, not a, or not all moisturizer are equal, right? But mm -hmm. uh, the clean green one, we built it that so it was buildable. So you can actually layer on throughout the day. Okay. Um, that's good. But it's always best to have cleaner skin. If your skin's all dusty and dirty, you don't really want to add anything on. But there's other great things too, is, you know, you have um, a misting spray is great. Um, you can also get these little travel uh, humidifiers and they're fantastic too. And mm. uh, uh, so there's little things like that you can do to kind of get that moisture back in your in your skin. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So let's, let's set the stage. You're going to get on a plane, right? You're flying. Let's, let's give it a long flight. Cause the hour long flights, I don't know how much those wreck your skin compared to like, I don't know, from LA to New York kind of situation. Let's, let's do a long flight. We're getting ready. Like, what do you, what do you do headed? You know, maybe it's the, before you get to the airport, maybe it's at the airport. What's, what's the routine to like prevent full dehydration? And then what's the routine when you get to your destination? Right, right. Well, I I think when you're traveling, it's better to wear less makeup because it's actually much easier to hydrate your skin when you have less makeup. So if, if you're someone that can go without foundation, fantastic. But if you need that little bit of foundation, uh, that color to your skin, uh, keep it light. Um, so definitely you got to be drinking plenty of fluids before you get on the plane because you'll get dehydrated when you're flying on the plane keep drinking um and like i said you know mist your skin when you're on on the plane um you can also do little face masks you know those ones that come in little sachets yeah with the little eye pads on and stuff and you know it's certainly if you're sitting by the window, no one's going to think you're crazy having a little iPad on for a long time. Maybe you don't want the full mask with just your eyes and your mouth open. That might scare everyone. But you can <laughs> do those little masks actually on the plane. But they're great the night before your trip, too. If you really want to kind of hydrate your skin beforehand, maybe do a full on um, mask, not just the those paper ones, but actually, you know, those um you can just layer on. You can, like, certainly Finley and Greens uh, moisturize. It's also a face mask. So if you layer on that heavier, that's great as a 10 minute intensive kind of hydrating uh, treatment. But yeah, so it's really prepping your skin, uh, drinking plenty of fluids, maybe doing a face mask beforehand. If you're brave enough, take those iPads <laughs> to put on your face during the trip. Um, the the uh, facial mists are great on the plane too. You can get, as I said, you get these little travel humidifiers. They're tiny and you can charge them up on a USB. They're great for a long, long flight too. Um, and then, yeah, keep putting your moisturizer on if you if you can. Okay. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, so yeah. humidifier. I like that idea. I like that idea because I think a lot of people in, in the summer, but also like any time of the year, we may be flying and we may be trying to go to a wedding, right? And we like timed it really short because that's, I noticed like for a lot of people, they'll fly in like and go right to like the rehearsal dinner, right? And then boom, into the festivities and like, you know, you want to be looking good or if you got a job interview, right. And you're, you're flying across country maybe, or maybe you're meeting somebody special. So that makes sense. That makes sense. I, I totally would whip out the little iPads. I actually need to try that on my next flight. Now I'm, I'm it's all good. in. All yeah, especially in. if you've got a long flight, you just want to like, you know, de-stress and chill. It's kind of a nice thing to do, but yeah. And, you know, traveling is stressful. So it's another reason why to keep your makeup light so you don't break out or whatever. But, um, but that's the other reason too, you know, having a little face mask or whatever. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Especially, I mean, if you're going to Europe, 
from the States. I'm thinking like, oh man, or if someone's flying from like LA to like Fiji, right? One of your friends decided to do a destination wedding in Fiji. Oh, <laughs> they better be really good friends. Um, but nevertheless, you know, I'm thinking about these really long like European flights or or overseas flights, even to Hawaii. That's a longer flight too, if you're going for, you know, a wedding or or whatnot too. So yeah, thinking about that, that's okay. Okay. So we've got that. Do is don't forget your the rest of your body, you know, like your yeah. hands. Hands get really dry. I mean, I'm really bad, and then they get all like dry and chapped or whatever. But definitely, don't forget your hands, uh, and your your legs, the rest of your body for sure. What about the feet, like the heels? I would think that's another spot. To... Definitely, yeah, it's a good point. Definitely, when you're yeah, you're gonna be you know on the beach or whatever. Have you tried the those um? There's, it's, I think it's called baby feet. Have you tried them? I think it's this no. Korean thing. I tried. I bought it on Amazon. It, they're kind of the craziest things. And these are little booties you put on, and they have all like the gunk and the and the gel in them. And you you put them on. I think you wear them for. I think I wore them for about twenty minutes. Feels a little bit prickly. I wore it, and then apparently over the next ten days, you're supposed to kind of sloth off the skin. It was pretty terrifying, actually. It was like I, I hadn't. Really, I was like a lizard for about fourteen days, but um, it worked pretty much. But I don't know. I think there's a lot of chemicals. Maybe not. Maybe not do it again. <laughs> uh oh. Well, I mean, it's something to think about. If if someone is in a pinch, sometimes <laughs> we we can detox off of things if we have to do something like that. But obviously, we're going to choose the, the natural route first. Um, and and you know, I have put your moisturizer on everything. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think one of the things that was like a light bulb moment for me, you know, while we were talking the first round, but also just in general is that, you know, our skin on our face is yes, what people see most, but it's still the same skin that you have on your arm as you have on your butt, you know, it's all the same, <laughs> all the same skin. And so, yeah, I've been putting, I've been putting your moisturizer everywhere. So face, hands, elbows, heels all of it, the feet, everything. And, and things look a lot better than, than they used to. I was, I was dry. I used to get like, um, the, the dry and it's probably dry today a little bit. Cause I haven't been, um, on my moisturizer because I dry out fast. So that was going to be another question. Like some of us, even with hydration mm -hmm. seem to dry out faster. Yeah. And I think it's some perimenopausal menopausal thing. Yes. Yes. Yeah, no, it is. And it's because, unfortunately, you know, during perimenopause, menopause, our skin barrier is kind of declining. So we don't have the ability to retain that hydration, that moisture. So, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, that's a culprit. <laughs> well, <laughs> then in that case, I'm going up like I'm guessing you could apply moisturizers as much as you really wanted to. I don't think that there's a point at which it gets to be too much. Like, yes, it's money, but still. Have you yeah. thought about that ever? Like, what's like the max amount of times that someone could reapply in a day? Well, I think it's going to come down to how you like like to feel, right? After a while, you're just going to be thick and greasy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we like with, with ours, we did make it buildable. So you can put it on as many times a day, but it's also going to come to a point that your skin can only absorb so much. True. Which is the other thing. So um, yeah, I mean, I guess you can experiment, but uh... <laughs> See, I mean, I think time, you know, watching time, seeing how it goes, you know, right now I'm, you know, about five hours into my day and I moisturize this morning after my shower. So, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's just getting to know your timing and, exactly. and seeing what it is. Okay. So one of the big things that I've experienced myself that I, I'm a little bit ashamed to, to, to tell people, but I'm going to do it anyway, because I've burnt like pretty much most of my body in different <laughs> places over the courses of time. And my lips and my ears have mm -hmm. been ones that I have not thought about and really not thought about how do I prepare my skin for the, the summer and, and the sun. I just usually jump right in and go, I'm here. What do we do now? And so I've seen people talking about exfoliation. I've, I've seen people talking about antioxidants and serums and, you know, vitamin C's and E's and you name it, prepping your skin for for the the summer is this hype do we need to do that do we need to exfoliate do we need to like exfoliate our lips and and ears what's the what's the deal well it, 
I mean, I think as far as skincare, summer skincare routine, it should be the same routine that you're, you're doing throughout the year because it's all about consistency. So mm-hmm. just to do something for a certain for a few months of the year or a few weeks of the year, for one, you're probably going to waste your money because, you, you know, those products aren't going to be as effective anyway. Um, but as far as, yeah, your, your um, lips and your ears, I think they're the things that people forget to put SPF on, mm-hmm. right? I, I have burnt my ears before and I've definitely burnt my lips. So always put sunscreen on there. And there's some great lip balms now. There's a company called Super Goop, not to be confused with Goop, the Gwyneth mm-hmm. Paltrow, but Super Goop is a really non-toxic line of, of, of uh, sunscreens. And they have a huge range of different types, but they have some really good um, lip balms that have got an SPF and some of them are tinted. Um, then they're, they're just really, really nice products. Um, so that, but as far as exfoliation, um, exfoliation is good and bad. I think when people exfoliate, they generally use the wrong products um, because they're either too harsh, um, they're physically rubbing too hard, and they're probably doing it too often. So they say don't exfoliate more than two times a week. Personally, I think that's too much. Um oh. Uh, and especially when you're in perimenopause or menopause, because as we mentioned, your skin barrier function is kind of not as good anymore. And, you know, you don't want to damage that even further. And exfoliating and over exfoliating can really damage that. So you're actually going to get drier skin ultimately. So be careful when you exfoliate. It is good. Certainly on your body is a good thing. Um, I've been looking at, you know, that dry brushing. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've done that. Um Again, the jury's out on that for me right now, but I am trying it. I I think all it's really doing is kind of, you know, bringing the, the blood to the surface. But I am concerned that I'm maybe damaging my skin too with the brush. So, mm-hmm. um, but, um, so yeah, be careful with exfoliating. But also look for more like the chemical exfoliators like salicylic acid or... Um, or glycolic acid don't use you know the apricot kernels don't use the brushes on your face yeah so it's exfoliating the right way and that's hard (laughs) yeah well I mean there's some things you think about right when Mm -hmm. when you're older compared to when you're younger and say you had like for I've when I was younger I had really oily skin right? Mm -hmm. Like it was like oil slick on my face. And so like the, those brushes you hold that vibrate and you press the button and it's just like a power scrub to your face. Like when I was like 17, 18, actually maybe in my twenties, cause I don't know if they were around when I was 17, 18, but like those kind of things, like I was like, yes, let's do this. Right now. I feel like if I did that, I would probably end up like I had wind wind burn or something. Well, that's exactly it. You know, it can make your skin more sensitive, right? You can irritate your skin. And also then when you go and put the other products that, you know, the sunscreen or the moisturizer, your skin's going to sting. So yeah, it's getting that happy, that happy balance. Yeah. Interesting about, you know, the exfoliating marketing though, I will be honest because I, I today was actually in the shower looking at some of my skincare products that I have. And one of them, like the back of it, I read it and it was like, yeah, exfoliate every day. And it has the microbeads, not the apricot, but still I'm like, okay, well, microbeads. I mean, is it the well, same? Yeah. I, I wouldn't use well for environmentally, you know, it shouldn't be, you know, that that whole yes. thing with microbeads too. Um, yeah, it's still gonna damage your skin. And the thing is, I think people have that feeling that they feel they need a really rub. And that, that friction, you don't want too much friction on your skin, you know. So yeah, yeah. maybe. Do it a little bit. I mean, it, I'm not saying that I don't ever exfoliate myself. I might do it once a month or something, but that's the, that's the most that I do. Uh, yeah. And I generally put it into my, um, I use a gel to cream uh, face wash. So I'll add a little bit to that. So it's not, I guess I'm, what do you, what, what am I doing? I'm thinning it out a little bit, you know, so making it a little bit more gentle. Yeah. Okay. So like you're saying, the glycolic and salicylic, so enzymatic type of exfoliation better than the apricot kernels and microbeads and all the ones that they say are natural, coconut derivative, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. stuff. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. And, and, and start light, you know, the, you know, the, the lowest concentration you can get, the better. Um, I mean, you know, a lot of people like retinol, which is also, you know, like an exfoliator too, but 
there's a real movement now and a lot of doctors are coming out saying that you really shouldn't use retinol in over-the-counter products. It should be under doctor supervision and everything. And the European Union has just moved this year. It, it's, um, I think they're rolling out the new regulations. They're limiting the amount of retinol in over-the-counter um, products because they're really concerned with people um, um, getting too much vitamin E. Uh, being too overexposed to vitamin E. Uh, and also there's that risk that you're going to hurt yourself with uh, with retinol as well because, you know, people are tempted to use too much, you know. Um, so, yeah, so yeah. That's, the other, that's the other thing, you know. <laughs> well, I've heard different stories about the retin retinols and, and using the different versions of it because, I mean, yes, with the concentrations that I can prescribe as a doctor versus what I've seen, you know, it varies, right? But- right. I've also heard, and and I'd love to hear your take on this, and if you've seen this, a lot of people are talking about the retinol, because of its exfoliating capability, it's thinning your yeah. skin. That's, you yeah. That that is again, you know, I was, I, I wrote a I wrote a paper on retinol, the good the good and bad on retinol recently, and so that's kind of why it's in in my head a lot more. Yeah, that was the feeling of a lot of doctors now that long term there really isn't the evidence. You know, they haven't there hasn't really been long term studies on the use of retinol. So that's with thinking that maybe you could be in in at the beginning. Right now, it's doing great things, but there could be an issue later on. Yeah, for sure, thinning it out. Yeah. It makes me wonder. It definitely makes me wonder. And, you know, there's been this whole talk, like, can you use it during the summer? Do you lay off of it? What's, you know, what's the proper time frame? When should you stop using it? Do you have any, like, guidelines that you give folks or thoughts you have about when to use it, when to stop it, if you are using it? Um, well, for me, I don't use it because of my skin type. Um, I would just burn, you know, and it's just not I don't feel comfortable using retinol, I guess, but um, to be totally honest, but um, no, I would definitely not use retinol or those kinds of products during the summer. Um, certainly, if you're going to go outside, you got to use a really high sunscreen. Um, you got to be wearing hats and everything because you're just going to get more brown spots. You're going to be much more sensitive to light. So again, you know, you could end up damaging your skin too unintentionally, of course. So I would, but but you, to answer your question, when would you lay off it? in preparation for a holiday? I'm not sure. I mean, what would you think? Great question. You know, in, in my mind, I have told people like a month before, and I don't know, I, I kind of come up with the, the way I come up with things is thinking about your skin cycle, thinking about having enough time for new layers to come back up. You know, right. I, it's hard. It's hard to say, but I yeah. kind of concluded with a month before and now with heading into summer I usually end up saying it you know somewhere around like April is when I tend yeah. to tell folks yeah and the, and the other thing is too is you know you can still get sunburn right on a mm -hmm. on a day so that's the other thing that kind of worries yeah. me with retinol too that it doesn't have to be on a beach you know you could be I don't know you could be skiing right right mountain and, and get it too so yeah that's why I, I it just concerns me a bit but uh yeah well and the other thing I think about too is being stuck in the car and traffic and yeah. the sun coming in and like my left side is more color damage uh, you know than my uh, right yeah same, same with my hand too you know I've got a lot more brown spots on that hand you know um yeah, I got one hand. Well, I guess both hands look old, but one looks a little bit older than the other. <laughs> no, I'm looking at it too. As soon as you said that, I looked down, I'm like, well, there are. They're definitely, they're, there's more little, you know, freckles on this side than the, than the right. So, you know, it's things we, it's things we don't think about. And that's, mm -hmm. I think, you know, there's the obvious, but right. with things like the retina, usually, you know, when I'm re making recommendations, yeah, you know, I, it, in Washington state, we tend not to see the sun very much um, until until after um, April, like March in the afternoons, it'll show up a little bit. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things where consistent sun isn't even till July. And so I think we also have to think about like, where are we at, but also what are we doing, right? Because if it's raining on us, not too many people are going to hang out outside very long, but we get stuck in traffic. Right. No, so, and I think that's it. I think there is a big difference between being prescribed retinol 
by your doctor and buying it in a skincare product. Um, because one thing, do you really trust that brand? Because that brand is all about marketing hype and whatnot. Whereas I would trust my doctor a lot more than I would a product I can buy, you know, in uh, the pharmacy or in a Sephora or Ulta or something when it comes to something that has the ability to damage my skin. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, definitely something to think about. I I've noticed more and more, a lot of docs are handing out retinol to patients mm -hmm. okay. um, who have been complaining about their skin looking older and yeah. it, it's kind of like, <laughs> It's going to sound terrible. It's like the semaglutide um, of skincare from your primary care doctor, which right. does make me concerned. Um, yeah. I am a little concerned about it, especially like you had mentioned earlier, your skin type yeah. does, what does not do well with retinol. Can you elaborate a little bit on that for folks so that they might be thinking like, is my skin type the type like Helen's? Right. Well, my skin is really sensitive. And I have that really white European skin that burns really easily. Um, and so if I get burned, I am red and I stay red and I never turn brown. So um, the only time I turn brown is if I put a fake tan on. So um, so that's my skin type. Yeah. And I think my skin, certainly now I'm, I'm 51, almost 52. My skin is thinner. And I don't know if that has something to do with retinol too, as far as why it doesn't why it doesn't like my skin or why my skin doesn't like retinol. But yeah. Hmm. It's definitely something to think about. Now you mentioned yeah. tanners and self tanners. Yeah. And, and I think for a lot of people, you know, I, I've used them in the old school versions right. and I turned out orange and then between oh, my know. webbings, I was orange, you know? So I think a lot of people, maybe of our age who tried yeah. them out in the early days, they're like, I am not, no. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and I've tried spray tanning too with a with a friend who who did th that works in that industry. And I'm like, yeah, it's cool. But tell us a little bit about like how does like self tanner affect like perimenopausal menopausal skin, and is it a good thing? Do you have some recommendations in terms of brands? Like, what's what's your scoop on that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, fake tans, and I call it like faking and baking because, you know, I put it on, <laughs> I go to bed or whatever. Um, but um, Fake tans have come a long, long way in the last few years. And, you know, there was that disgusting smell, you know, yeah. that you would have for days later. And especially if you like sweat or something, you could come it out of your pores. It, there's still a little bit of a smell, but it's not like it used to be. Um, but there's some great um, uh, self tanners now that are made with non toxic ingredients because a lot of the, what was in those fake tans were toxic ingredients. So there's brands like Cora Organics. Great line. Um, the one I really love um, is called, uh, I know, I'm probably like ruining how you pronounce it, but it's called um, Vida Liberata. Um, that's great. And I love the one that comes in a mousse and you have a big mitt and you basically, I, I have a shower. I don't even moisturize after the shower. I get out, I get, have a shower, put it on. And with this massive mitt, I can do my whole body, even my back and the hard to reach places. And you don't streak. It's absolutely fantastic. They have a, um, they have a, a rapid one that you can put, just have it on for an hour. And you got a nice light tan. If you put it on for two hours, it's medium, three, it's deep. So you can actually control your tan now too with these, these formulas. So I like those. And I think there's another line called Isle of paradise and they're these, these little drops that you can put in your moisturizer and or in your body lotion mm -hmm. and and that so yeah and they don't streak so i i love them and for me um as i told you i never tan it doesn't matter how much sun i get i'm always going to be white and i feel a little bit self-conscious in, in you know in a bikini or something if i'm like like really pale and pasty almost blue so having the tan makes me a bit confident yeah oh my gosh <laughs> almost blue oh but, you, but it's like it, it's like a comedy though trying to put it on in the bathroom you know you're like you know like contorting in all these different angles trying to get everything between your legs under your armpit yeah it's just like... see <laughs> if I tried that I would be I would miss I would miss something and it'd be very <laughs> obvious and like there would be like a round circle like on my thigh <laughs> or something I I give people credit who do it but like I you just know what? you're surprised yourself I, I I I'm gonna wage you trying to the mitt is is huge, right? It's a big man. So yeah, you might, need, you might need your husband or, you know, a sister or something to maybe do your back. But yeah, yeah. 
go for it. But the thing is, who's the, who's you're never going to see what you look at the back. So you're going to be thinking you look fabulous. You know. See- See, my husband would like spell, like spell something on my back and then not say a word. And then people would be, you know, laughing at me and I'd have no idea. No, idea. Um, you have to, you have to trust the person that's going to put it on. Let's put it that way. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, I'm glad it's come a long way because boy, back in, back when I was in high school and earlier, I think even before, yes, the smell, I couldn't get over that. And then the streaking and then my webs being like, like it was almost oh, like, hi, I put fake tanner on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> look, at, look at me. Oh my goodness. So with the, the, the tanners and then moving into like SPF, mm-hmm. I've always been asked this and, and I necessarily was like, I don't think that makes a difference, but someone tried to tell me that the self tanning stuff will prevent you from burning as, okay. as much as you normally would. Is that true? I think that's false. Yeah. I've never heard that. Yeah. Yeah. I had someone say like, oh, I put the self tanner on and then I don't burn. I'm like, hmm. yeah, no. I, well, yeah. Yeah. No, no. I, I definitely would burn. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you got to have a really good sunscreen, right? And there's that, you know, there's that debate. Is it mineral or is it right? Chemical? Which ones you go for? Um, I know a lot of people don't like the mineral because that's the one it's kind of chalky and you feel it. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're, they're the most effective ones, you know? Yeah. And the chemical ones, you're going to have to reapply a lot more, but the, um, there's some, there's a, but again, SPFs have come a long way now because I, I hated wearing it for that reason that you'd feel it on your skin and then you'd feel sticky. And then certainly if you were the beach, everything would stick to you and whatnot or whatever, or your hair would be plastered on your face. Um, yeah, but that they've come a long way now too, you know? That's wild. Cause yes, like I, I remember the whole sand being like, huh, sand is stuck, not coming <laughs> off either. It's totally, totally a thing. Now in terms of like some, some product suggestions for mm-hmm. like, let's go with mineral and let's go with chemical, because I know some people like will stick with their chemical chemical. I, I will still do zinc oxide all day long. I, even though it makes me look ghost white at first, I'm like, it's going to soak in. And it seems to do the trick. So let's talk about product suggestions and and what you find most effective. Well, there's a line called Elta MD, but absolutely fantastic line. And they have zinc oxide in everything. Um, They have so many different formulas, you know, if you're doing sports or whatever. But the one I like is called UV Clear. It's SPF 46 and it comes clear or even though it says clear, there's there's UV, there's UV clear and there's UV clear tinted. I like the tinted one, which is kind of nice because um, you feel like you have a little something on your face. Um, so, you know, you can go to the bar after the beach and you feel like you've you got a little bit of makeup on, but it's not makeup. That's a great line. And I would swear by that line. Um, again, I mentioned that super goop. Great. Fantastic stuff there. Um they're they're my two kind of go-tos to be perfectly honest um yeah Uh, and you know there's that argument you you know is that people say well you know anything over spf 25 doesn't work i mean what do you think about that i know i burn on a 25 so i always use at least a 40 i think it depends on your skin right i think it depends on your skin me i i am terrible i will use zinc oxide on my face and my chest and that's as far as it goes because yeah. I'm very, I'm naturally kind of yellowy brown color. Um, even though I'm full on Polish and Swedish, I have no idea, no clue. I've got probably, if I did ancestry, I probably have something in there that's, <laughs> that's helping me. Cause my dad too, he's like, see, he, I tan very easy. So, you know, I usually tell folks I might be a bad example because I will just put the zinc oxide on the face and the chest, but I do think it's individual. Because yeah. my husband is very fair, like you are. And yeah. for him, we have to do like, we, I should say in the past, we've done heavier amounts of the 50, 55 for him. Now yeah. what we found with him, if we get him outside, like in between like nine and 10 in the morning or like after four and he gets sun exposure, he can have the natural exposure. He lightly gets tan and he doesn't burn. So we've kind of got him a little bit away from the heavier ones. So it's an alternative, I guess, way of prepping your skin slowly for- No, I think that's, I think that's a great idea. I really do. Uh, 
And I think a lot of people forget, you know, their hairline. Mm -hmm. You know, I've gotten really burnt on the top of my head, um, you know, before now. Um, so, yeah, I always... And so sometimes those sprays a little bit better. You can get mineral sprays though, yep. just to put in your hairline. But uh, yeah. And then what I found too is um, there's a great line called Kate Somerville. Mm -hmm. And she has this SPF that you can put on over makeup. So during the day, you can put it on and it doesn't ruin your makeup. Um, so that's a good one. And then those powder sunscreens are great too for putting on your head and your hairline they're great for ball guys we used we use them a lot on the movies when we're out you know and all our actors have makeup on and putting sunscreen on would ruin the makeup but those powder ones and the kate somerville spray are just fantastic yeah oh i never really thought about that because yeah sometimes you will film outdoors not in a set yeah huh that has to be a challenge because obviously some folks can really start sweating and then mm -hmm. now you've got the makeup running and yeah. trying to get all that. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. No, no, it's awful. Yeah, it's awful. So, you know, we did, they've got fans in front of their face in between takes or whatnot. And you're like dabbing them down constantly. Yeah. yeah. But the powder, <laughs> the, so the Kate Somerville is is your go to on set. And, it and is on set. Yeah. And I think, you know, certainly, you know, if you're at a wedding, an outdoor wedding and you've done your makeup and you're outside or whatever in Hawaii or whatever, it's great to put over your makeup too, you know? So, yeah. That's wise advice. Cause I think a lot of people, let's put it this way. I, myself included for my wedding, I felt like I was all perfect. And then like, as a wilted flower <laughs> wilts throughout the day, <laughs> I feel like my face slid off and I just kind of was like, hmm, by the end of, of the, the July summer experience or August. Yeah. I got married in August. So I can't even remember. Um, anyway, so thinking about that too. So for the average folks, like who are like, you know, the powder and the Kate Somerville and like, what about you know, some people have like pool parties they're going to, right? Or they may go to Vegas and go to some of the pool parties in Vegas too. Right. Same kind of thing, having that in your little bag there. Oh yeah, absolutely. And there's nothing to stop you from spraying on the rest of your body too. But um, but yeah, it is it is for your face. Um, and it has a primer to it. But the powders are great because they're great for kids too. Oh. You know, because a lot of kids don't like that stuff on them, and you can no. quickly, yeah. Huh. I never thought about that. And they come in tints, so you can get a tinted one too. So, yeah. Very nice. Very nice. So that kind of leads us into like summer makeup products since right. that is your, you know, secondary to the moisturizer line and the skincare line. Your specialty is the makeup. So what, you know, what can we do to kind of get a nice glow but not look, like I said, wilting is what I, what I feel like happens. Right. Um. Again, you know, we, we talked about the moisture uh, uh, moisturizer, um, but you've got to have your makeup products have to be somewhat moisturizing too. So I personally stay away from as much powder uh, makeup as I possibly can and go for cream because cream also helps lock in that hydration too. Plus a cream is a bit more reflective. It's not matte, so you get that natural glow. So um, that's great. I generally, um, I wear, I don't wear much foundation anyway but i would definitely advise people if they can if they can live like that a lot of people like a full face but if you can wear less foundation it's much healthier in the summer because you're going to be sweating you don't want to block your pores and stuff um so tinted sunscreens like i mentioned you can have tinted um uh foundations too um but what you can do is just with your own uh sunscreen add a little dollop of your foundation to it and you're creating your own there which is a really Real, you know, cheap and easy trick. You're not having to buy a whole new, whole new foundation. But definitely, oh, bronzers are great. You know, a little bronze on on those areas that the sun would naturally hit on your face, on the tops of your arms, you know, down your shin bones. Um, yeah, don't forget to, you know, uh, moisturize your entire body. You know, cocoa butter is is cheap. Just lather yourself up with cocoa butter. You know, you don't need to go and buy those fa fancy glow sprays. Um, you could you can do that. But as I said, super goop, I'm really pushing them today and I don't mean to. Um, <laughs> they, they have a lot of these uh, glow glow products. So after sun glow products. So they're kind of nice too. Yeah. Love it. Love it. And so like, are there any lip care products that you specifically go for? Or are you the kind of gal who's like, I'll just put my moisture, like my SPF over my lips too? Or do we want specific? Because I know you kind of talked about 
super group has yeah. it too, I yeah, think. Super Burt's Bees. I <laughs> love Burt's Bees. And they have they have great uh, great ones and they're tinted too. Chapstick, can never go wrong with chapstick. Um, and, you know, if you're a kind of person that wants some color on your, your lips, you know, put a little lip pencil on and then just put chapstick. Um, but yeah, you definitely have to have an SPF because if you're someone that maybe has herpes or something, sun can bring out an outbreak and you definitely don't want that on your summer vacation or whatever. Yeah. How do you even cover that up for uh, like, I, say, say it happens oh, it on set? Awful. It was awful on set. Yeah, it's, it, you, you really can't. They're just going to have to shoot them from the side or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, was, can, you can hide it, the color, but you just can't. It's the texture, the 3D thing. You're going to see it. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I wonder about that. As you said, I'm like, hmm. Now, what's your take on, because I know it's very popular, and I've done it myself. I have a couple of esthetician friends who do, like, some of the non-toxic dyes for the eyelashes and I for love. the eyebrows. Is yeah. that like something you? Yeah, I would definitely recommend that, you know, um, because then you're jumping in and out of the pool, you're not worrying about your, you know, your mascara. And plus waterproof mascara requires a lot more friction to remove it. It's going to damage your eye area. So definitely, yeah, those non-toxic dyes are fantastic. And then just take like an eyelash curler and just curl your lashes and you're, you're good to go. Yeah. Oh my gosh, the eyelash curler. My mom had one. I had no idea what that thing was about um, till I tried it. And then I was like, wow, magic. But most people can't tell I have eyelashes because they're blonde. So <laughs> this is this is where the dye comes in. I'm going to have my girlfriend do a little bit of mine coming up soon. And same thing with eyebrow. I'm guessing having that with non-toxic tint too can help so that you're not like running. It's not running down the side of your face when you're trying to highlight your eyebrows. Exactly. And, you know, a lot of hairdressers, hairstylists too, when, if they're dyeing your hair, they'll brush, comb a little bit through your eyebrows. So you could go and do that and then it's not going to cost you anything. It's the other way to do it. Noted. Noted. Hmm. <laughs> so obviously we've talked about a whole bunch of things related to skin and, and summer and sun and those kind of things. One of the things I think I am curious about is say you've had all day out right? And you've had sun exposure and now you're going to go to a party. Right. What do you do in between being beach and going into the party to kind of help your skin? Like what's, what's your moisturizer protocol? And then what do you do to like keep the makeup looking fresh, but not like absorbing all of the moisturizer at the same time so that like like say and and where I'm going with this I know it's kind of abstract but like say you like really kind of sort of burnt yourself and it's yeah. not terrible but it's definitely like everything feels like super tight like you know something went wrong yeah 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 I've, yeah I've been there um well you know you, you you come you come back from the beach you know you have your shower now the key is not to have a really hot shower because if you have a really hot shower you're going to strip your skin of even more moisture. So if you have been overexposed to sun, you're going to be really tight and you don't want to get, you know, you know, sometimes when you have sunburn, it goes all prickly and it drives you mad for days, you know, whatever. So it's really important not to then, you know, accidentally strip your skin of even more moisture. So um, don't have a hot shower, cool shower if you can, you know, medium to cool shower. Um, and then as soon as you get out of the shower, you got to really lather on that moisturizer and, try and just hang around maybe in your underwear in your hotel room for a little bit and really let it sink in and maybe add a little bit more before you get dressed. But if you've been really burnt or even partially burnt, you don't want to put makeup on because makeup's going to irritate it. So I would say, you know, you put your after sun on, you put your moisturizer on. And then as far as makeup, I guess it depends how burnt you are. Uh, but keep it really light. Maybe just, you probably don't need a blusher because your cheeks are probably <laughs> red anyway. So I would maybe play up your eyes, definitely do your brows, do your, you know, your mascara, um, put a lip balm on, maybe a little bit of lip pencil, lip balm, but um, you're going to be really glowing anyway. <laughs> so you might need a little powder, but you know, yeah. But mm. I would say even if you haven't had um, sunburn, keep your makeup light. Yeah. And use more cream based um, eye, eye creams and blushes and bronzers and things. Yeah. So it does sound like you might need kind of a seasonal makeup protocol. 
for both seasons? Yeah, well, yes, yes and no. I mean, if you're in perimenopause or menopause, I always suggest go with cream products, right? So really, you're using the same products. You might be just using them in a different way. But for, for younger folks, they'll probably wear much maybe a heavier look in the winter than they will in the summer. And so, yeah, so there will be different product changes. Yeah. So I would definitely say less is more in the summer and those lighter products. So they're going to be less chance of blocking your pores. Yeah. Hey, okay. Oh, fun stuff. You know, one of the things I think about going into summer, because I, I tend not to wear makeup very much, if at all. And so the, the tints and things are, are my jam. But I do like to highlight my eyelids sometimes and do a little bit of fun in the evening. So with perimenopause, you're saying and menopause, you're saying a cream for. Yeah, yeah I, can't I think, think of the name right now for eye eyelids. Eyelids. Yeah. Oh, what do you call what do you call the makeup you put on your eyelids? Oh, my God. Eyeshadow. There Eyeshadow. we go. <laughs> <laughs> totally totally gone totally gone in that word yeah um i th the other reason why i like cream is that you can con you can control it right you can have light coverage medium and heavy coverage so that's the other way so um bobby brown have these great uh eyeshadow cream sticks and and they're fantastic when you're going on holiday because you don't have to pack so much but i just love them all year round and um so during the day i do it sh sheer and at night i just put more on it and um yeah, that they're perfect. So they're great for vacations. Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Let, I, that I have to remember the word. I, okay, this is how long. Full disclosure, <laughs> everyone listening. This is how long it has been since I have actually went shopping for eye makeup. It's it's embarrassing. But Bobby Brown is a name I definitely know. And like, I think I probably told you in the last one. Like, I got a bunch of that for my wedding because they just basically did my makeup for me because otherwise. I might look like a five-year-old that got into the mom's makeup. <laughs> I bet you did. You'd be fabulous. <laughs> oh my goodness. And you mentioned like before, so Bobby Brown's great for the creams. You had mentioned before um, in our previous podcast, another brand that you really liked for a cream kind of foundation. What was that brand? Is that brand now? God, I use so many different ones now. Um, right now I'm using that RMS. Okay. And I'm using that. I love the cream. Um, that's great. And I'm seeing a lot of people online now on Instagram doing, is it, um, is it Saint or something? Saint, Saint, that people are all using these big like square rectangular pads and they're, they're putting them on. But anything cream, Burt's Bees is great. Um, hmm. Burt's Bees has these uh, cream sticks that you can use as blusher and highlighters and contours, even on your lip. They're great. Um, they're, they're really hydrating. Um but any, anything cream, I would say, okay. yeah, yeah. I like that you have two for one things that you can use the lips and you can use on the cheeks. That helps for travel for sure. That's going to exactly. lighten your load. And yeah. that it's a two for one. Now you can slip it. Like for me, my wallet is this big little wristlet. So if I can slip it in there, I might actually do it. Yeah, hmm. no, I like them. And that, um, and, and Bobby Brown has the sticks too, cream sticks, but I find they're too drying. So it's, Finding those cream sticks that you think are hydrating, you know, they don't, when they, when you put them on, they're not chalky. Um, yeah. That's okay. the key. Yeah. Okay. So. Max is always a good, good go-to, right? But that, then, but they're not a clean line. That's the thing. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and like you're saying before, like we have to like think about where we're going to apply them. Right. Cause if we have creams for the eyes, Bobby Brown's great there, but for other things, maybe we have our Burt's Bees. Like I think when you get to like the makeup counters at the mall, or if you see people talking about a line, you think you have to get everything from one line. And that's. No, no you don't. Um, you know, the only thing I would say is when it comes to skincare, you know, you know, a lot of people do this 10, 10, 10 step, um, you know, routine, that's just a waste of time. And this is the other thing that, you know, these uh, beauty counters, they will try and sell you multiple skincare products. So like the moisturizer, eye cream and the serum. And then a lot of the times they have conflicting ingredients in them. And so you're wasting your time anyway, you know, so the certain, I think it's like vitamin C and vitamin C and retinol don't go together. They completely cancel each other out. So there's other ingredients like that. So again, it's um, less steps, less products, and they're going to be a lot more efficacious. Yeah. Well, I've definitely went to one product 
And and folks, this is why I do have Helen Beck on because I love her moisturizer so much. Like I said before, I put that on everything. So like Frank's Red Hot Sauce, <laughs> I put it on everything, everything, uh, because it it's just moisturizes and it's the at a level of moisturizing that I like how it feels. And, and that I think for me is why I do it. Like, yes, I like cocoa butter and, and coconut oil and things, but there is something about it's, I'm not a grease ball. I'm yeah. hydrated without the grease ball feel is how yeah. I, how I feel about it. Cause if I have coconut oil, cause I work with my hands when I'm, you know, seeing patients, I will go home and I will feel just like a grease ball. Whereas yeah, you feel icky. Yeah. yeah, icky and sticky. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that for the summer. You don't want to be sticking. You don't want to be walking around like stuck with all of the sand on your oh, arm. I know. That, that exfoliates to a whole nother <laughs> level that we don't want. No, no. no. Don't do it. <laughs> so, okay. Let's tell folks about where they can find the Finley and Green products. Let's talk about like what's on the horizon for you guys. Give them the scoop there. Well, we're uh, direct to consumer, so you can find us on our website, finleyandgreen.com. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook, again, Finley and Green. Um, yeah, so it's kind of exciting. You know, things are starting to hit, heat up now. Um, we have an eye cream and a cleanser that hopefully will come out at the end of this year, the beginning of next year. Um, and we have some of these booster serums in uh, research and development right now. So I'm hoping, 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 hoping to get the first prototype um, of, of the serum, the booster serum, which is going to be really cool because we're all about like, you know, less is more and less steps and less products. So the booster serums, depend. there's going to be about four or five. So depending on your particular issue like for me i have a lot of hyperpigmentation issues so i would pick the uh the uh the clarity or the brightening booster and i'll add that booster to my to the moisturizer and that will just kind of focus a bit more intense treatment on trying to diffuse the brown spots so they're tailored serums that you can go on your face as a, as a traditional or you can add it to your eye cream or your moisturizer for an extra boost so that's kind of exciting so uh yeah, I'll send you some and uh, you can you can tell me if you like it or not. Yeah, definitely want like what you got <laughs> going on for the hyperpigmentation, because I that is my thing. I I have used and abused my skin and, um, you know, being basic in that I, the zinc oxide is all I all I tend to do. But I do have like I always talk about it's like I have damage in here that I think happened after an octanoxate um, inflammatory reaction and I can't get rid of it. And I'm kind of like owning it, but I don't want anything else to happen. Right. <laughs> no right. more. And I don't want to go down the route of having to use like, um, oh, now, of course, now my brain's going to lose that too. Clearly, I need my more lines made today. Um, the the skin lightening agents, yeah. like the quinones. Like yeah. I, I did a lot of that in my 30s, and I don't feel like that's the answer at this point either. So, no, I know. I know it's hard. I mean- you know, it, there's only so much a skincare product can do, right? They can help minimize. They're not going to completely eradicate it. But yeah, I think they can they can stop you developing more, which is the key. Um, you know, for someone like me too, I abused my skin through my teens and my 20s because I wanted to be brown and my skin didn't want to be brown. So I just burn like a crisp all the time. So uh, yeah, I have a lot of sun damage. Um, so, you know, the ingredients like, you know, what, as you mentioned, vitamin C is great for brightening. Niacinamides are great for brightening. So there are other ingredients to look for. Yeah. And you've got them in, in, <laughs> in, in, I am aware, like when I, like guys, no joke, when I saw her product and read everything on the back, I'm like, it has all the things that I always looked for in all of the hydration products all in one. And there's no chemicals score, right? Yeah. That's yeah. what's most important. Well, Gosh, Helen, thank you so much for coming back on and chatting with me and sharing with all of your your experience here with the skin because it's just, I think for some people to hear it from someone that has worked, you know, with with celebrities, with some of the toughest situations when you're like under stress and you figure out the workarounds, like we know that you know what works and, and what doesn't. So love to hear that. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me on. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. Hey, Hell Junkies. I hope you enjoyed this podcast with Helen and I. I love chatting with her and I learn so much. Gosh, I do love the Finlay and Green Moisturizer and I do believe that it saved me from burning when I was in the Caymans earlier this year. So if you want to try it out, 
Use my code DRK20 to get 20% off. Great stuff. Have questions, hit me up. I would love to answer them for you on the moisturizer. And like I said, it's like my Frank's Red Hot Sauce. I put it on everything and I'm not kidding. All right, have a great day, whatever you're doing. Hey, Health Junkies. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Health Fix Podcast. To help support my mission to bring you tips, tricks, and tools to help you optimize your health, I'd be grateful if you'd like, subscribe, and write me a review for the podcast. And if you hear a product you're interested in on the podcast, you can now go over to my website to learn more. That's doctor spelled out, J-K-R-A-U-S-E, nd.com. Just click on shop and you'll find all the information on my favorite products that I stand behind and use myself. All affiliate income earned with your purchases goes directly to help support the production of the podcast so I can keep bringing you quality health information. I appreciate your support and I'm honored to have you listening to my podcast as a fellow health junkie. Thanks again.